Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. My name is Kelson. I'm a fitness and sport instructor located out, out of Base Borden. Uh, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, barefoot training and some generic tips to help boost your foot health. Uh, I find that the foot itself is very often ignored in terms of uh, mobility, recovery, as well as strength training. Um, and it's the only contact point we have between our body and the ground. So if our foundation is weak, it makes sense that the, the rest of the structure could potentially have some issues if we ignore our foundation. So the focus for today's video is gonna discuss uh, what barefoot training is, what different types of modalities there are, uh, who can benefit from doing a little bit of barefoot training, uh, as well as, you know, how the heck do you do it? Um, uh, of course, with uh, all of our virtual content, we have our disclaimer that we have to address. Make sure you take the time to read through that disclaimer and follow the instructions uh, and make sure that this session is right for you. Uh, if you do happen to have any issues, just make sure you fill out a CF98 form. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the content. So let's start off by addressing the basics. What even is barefoot training um, and how do you do it? Uh, barefoot training itself is just simple as not having any coverings on our feet. You can get more into it as far as you know, targeting specific muscles of the foot and ankle and lower extremities. But just as a generic blanket statement, barefoot training is doing any kind of movement sans footwear. Um, the, the problem with wearing shoes, uh, especially like very rigid, hard, overly structured shoes, uh, the analogy I like to use is like operating with mittens. Your feet have a ton of sensory organs that provide your body with a lot of information about the environment that we're navigating. The hardness of the ground, uh, you know, the flatness of the surface, so on and so forth. When we put those big clunky boots and shoes on our feet, it tends to muffle that proprioceptive information. And that muffling of information can increase the likelihood of uh, you know, stress injuries, sprained ankles, so on and so forth. Um, again, the analogy here being that if you try to do something that required dexterous uh, and like sensory information, uh, with winter gloves on, you would find it very difficult to be able to efficiently complete the task as well as understand what's happening in the environment. So that's the, the simple description of it. Like I said, there's other more specific things that you can look at, but as a nice generic statement, it's just spending time without the support of our shoes. You can take a look into your hallway right now and you'll probably see that you've got different levels of shoes. You've got your super hard boots that aren't very flexible. You can't bend them, you can't rotate the sole of the joint. The ankle's nice and stiff. Really, the boot does all the work for you as you're doing your, your walking or your rucking, right? Then we kind of shift it down to more of like a standard athletic training shoe. Uh, think about like your, your new balance that you're used to mow the lawn, right? Again, they're gonna be very high density rubber, fairly stiff shoes, especially along the sole of the shoe. Um, you should, in an ideal world, be able to fold a shoe in half and kind of twist it from side to side. That malleability of the shoe is gonna directly translate to allowing your foot to function in a more natural fashion. So that's my quick spiel about what is barefoot training. Uh, we'll get into more specific examples as the video progresses. Uh, let's talk about who can benefit from barefoot training. Very simply, there's a wide range of people that can benefit from adding some barefoot training to their regular training routine. You have your athletes who can benefit from increased proprioception, increased strength, power, stability, coordination. All of these things are gonna uh, improve. If we can improve the strength of our foundation and our ability to use our proprioceptive information effectively, 
Uh, then you have the kind of middle of the road. You have people who are looking to just maintain their, their you know, generic fitness. They're not training for a sport or for a particular activity. They're just going to the gym to try to maintain their general health. Um, then on the opposite end of the extreme, being people who are injured or uh, you know, recovering from surgery or injury, these are other candidates that would be uh, great to use the barefoot training method with. Um, simply put, different groups will get different things out of applying barefoot training to the program, but all, uh, all three of these categories can, can benefit from it in some way, shape, or form. So it's a long-winded way of us saying that anybody can get benefits from barefoot training if they're doing it correctly, safely, and progressing uh, appropriately. Now, let's talk about what the actual methods of barefoot training are. We've talked about what it is generically, who can benefit from it, but we haven't really addressed what it is. What are exercises that you can do? Um, very simply put, even just walking around your house without the support of shoes and without the constriction of socks is going to facilitate some sort of strengthening through the feet. Okay, so that's the level one, is just getting out of your shoes and working, navigating your environment without the added rigidity uh, and kind of uh, softening of impact that come along with wearing shoes. Um, there's other facets of barefoot training though. You have the facet of soft tissue work and mobility. So in order for our feet to work properly, we need to make sure that our toes are able to spread out efficiently. This is gonna help us distribute weight more appropriately and, uh, as well as some other things. Some simple drills that you can do is literally just sticking your fingers in between your toes and moving the joints around for 60 seconds. You'll notice that the spreading of the toes can be almost uh, very aggressive, right? Um, think about how most shoes are designed these days. They have kind of that cone finish and it's gonna scrunch all of your toes together. So we want to try to first start by opening up the toes. You can spread with your fingers and you can also roll out the bottom of your feet with a ball. Like so. You know, uh, working for about two minutes each side, right? Um, so that's going to help address the fundamental lack of mobility and lack of range through the tissues and the joints of our feet. From there, we can look at exercises that are designed to help strengthen the muscles. Uh, and help stabilize the joints. Uh, one of the first exercises that we look at with barefoot training is to do a short foot. So it's working on spreading the toes and trying to activate the arch of my foot. You would do a couple sets of 10 second uh, contractions in that short, uh, short foot position to help engage the intrinsic muscles of the foot and create some stability uh, as well as some other things. Um, then you can look at moving up the joint more towards the ankle. We can work on doing some ball raises. Usually this works better if I have uh, an eccentric phase. So if I can do this off a stair or a bench where my heels can drop down and I can get a bit of a stretch through my calves, that's also an effective exercise to help strengthen our ability to low impact forces, which at the end of the day is really what we're trying to accomplish with this barefoot training thing. We're trying to improve our proprioception, so improve our joints understanding of where it is in space, as well as improving the strength, stability, and endurance of all the muscles that are surrounding that ankle joint, foot, uh, as well as traveling up towards the hip and core. Um, so those are some very simple exercises that you can sprinkle into your routine, be it warm-up, uh, actual workout uh, work, or you know, potentially as part of a cool-down or recovery phase. Um, the important thing here is to start, uh, keep it simple, and do it uh, as much as you can. So if we can do you know, four or five days a week walking, at least you know, 10 minutes a day without any shoes on, you can gradually, easily progress that minute by minute, uh, you know, to, to try to get more strength and more exposure in that barefoot position. 
So I, I hope this has given you an idea of some different ways you can apply barefoot training. I hope it also helps you to understand why it can be a beneficial tool to add to your training regime. So as always guys, um, Kelsen here saying keep training, stay safe, but most importantly, have fun.